TCMI be a part of the move, raising up and equipping end-time believers to influence the nation for reformation and revival, hosting the glory, presence, and power of God, counteracting, exposing, and addressing modern-day ideologies with biblical truth, building and rebuilding core family values equipping Gen Z and Gen Alpha to stand for God. Now stay tuned and attentive for just God's word. I just want to, you know, as we open up the word this morning, and I want us to turn our attention to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to talk a little bit this morning about the power of our words. How many of you know that your words have power? When you speak, the Bible says it brings life or death. And so as we turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read, read from verse 29 to 30. And it says, let, are we there? And it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. It says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and speaking evil, and evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. And verse 32 says, And be kind to one another, tender hearted with our words, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. You see, we live in a world today everybody have something to say and it has gotten to the point where little or no thought or care is given when we release words when we speak words we don't think about how it will affect or impact those who will hear. And so the language of our society today has become very harsh. It's become very harsh. No care. We just let it rip. Because that's how I feel. We just speak with mind. There's nothing wrong with speaking your mind. But is it in love? Or is it with hatred? Is it with jealousy? Or is it to see the hearers of the word come up and be lifted and so the word of God tells us that there is life and death in the power of the tongue according to Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 how we manage our tongue is an indicator to the condition of our hearts have you ever thought about that the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But yet we take no care in what we say. 
Words are more. It's not just a simple sound that comes from our mouth that is shaped by the air passing through our throats. Our words have real power. Words have the power to build up and it has the power to tear down. It has the power to release joy but it also has the power to release sorrow. It has the power to diffuse an argument but it has a power to stir up anger. It's in Proverbs 15 verse 1 to 2 and I'm just treading this morning. It says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, meaning it just don't blurt out. But the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. Hey, are the word that you know? I know my word. That's the word of God. But we live in a time where we just say what we want to say because that's how we feel. I mean, no business on nobody in the field. I mean, no business out affect other people. We just want to say what me want to say. Are we quiet? Let me tell you. The amplified version of Ephesians 4, chapter 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome, meaning foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth. You hear it say? Ever come out of your mouth. But only such speech as it is good for building up others according to the need or the occasion. So that it will be a blessing to those who hear. In the scripture it signifies that when we speak words, especially when it is in the form of a corrective word. It should be to build up, not to tear down. Amen. But many times, you know what the enemy pushes us to? Because we have not learned how to govern the condition of our heart. We grab a little friend and we say, you know, say, me not like how that one day they do it. Look upon our shoes. Look on him pants. Look like it no iron. Look like he can go take it up out of one garbage pan. I'm just using. And we say these things. Not to the person, you know. But we find one uh, somebody. We link up with somebody that carries the same heart the same spirit and we chat not considering that our words are being released into the atmosphere the Greek word translated for unwholesome means rotten or foul and it says originally refers to a rotten fruit or vegetable have you ever thought about rotten food? Okay. A fruit can look good on the outside, but rotten on the inside. <laughs> We're talking about our speech reflecting the condition of the inside. And a lot of times, when we see the rottenness of the fruit on the outside, 
it means that the inside has totally gone bad. I want you to track with me now because it's talking about the mouth, the words that are coming out is a reflection on what's on the inside. So if we're rotten on the inside, the words that come out are going to reflect the same rotten. So rotten words, rotten heart. Luke six forty five says, "A good person produce good things from the treasure of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasure of an evil heart." So we, when we used to grow up, we used to hear, I said, boy, you know, we say some things and we go back and we say, me never mean it. What I say is not a reflection of who I am. But the word tell us something else. You see, the enemy attempts to use every circumstances of life in an attempt to get us to, to get us to a place where we justify the cruelty of our words. He keeps us in a place of being wounded and hurt and unforgiving. Because he understands the power of the words. Look at Job. You hear what he said to, G to, to God? He said, listen. If you remove your covering from him. And make everything go bad. He was trying to make a point that he will no longer serve you or he will no longer confess you as Lord. And when that spirit, that spoken word was released, here comes his comforters trying to accomplish that which was said. But I say to you this morning, power of the word of God stands over the power of the words of the enemy. And Job is a testimony of that because no matter what happened to him, he did not allow what was happening to dictate the words that came out of his mouth. So we try to justify the words we speak because we have been hurt, because we have been wrong. And we try to validate the inaccuracies of our heart by saying I didn't mean it. It's a real thing, you know, because a lot of times we don't really want to face what is on the inside of us. So we project it on other people. I yes. would try and make we make ourselves look good. Yes. A good person produces good things from the treasure of a good heart. This is why it is important that as believers, as believers, that we are 
diligent not to allow the vulgarity of our society to contaminate our hearts. I mean, a real thing, you know. Because if you're driving on one taxi one day, may I tell you. If you walk downtown, it no eat, it no take nothing for your flesh rise up. And we start cursing trees. <laughs> As believers, we must be diligent not to let that language get on the inside of us. We must be willing to deal with the hurt, the disappointment, the failures. Every one of those things must come in our lives. But we can't make it control this thing here. <laughs> Proverbs says this. Verse chapter 13, verse 2 to 3. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. He who guards what? His mouth preserves his life. Life. Enough time we get in a trouble because of this little thing here. Enough time we get in enough trouble because we don't guard what is coming out of our mouth. And we feel justified because we say we're boss wicked. Or that man wicked. Or that woman wicked. And we feel justified to say what we want to say. But I want to look at the word. He said, he who guards, he who is careful to examine what he's about to say preserves his life. But he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 12 verse 6 says, the words of the wicked are like a murderous ambush. So our words have the power to set up ambush for people. But the words of the godly saves life. I want us to write down this question and, and I want us to ask the Lord to really Help us be honest and answer it. It says, are our words building people up? Or is it tearing people down? I want to write that down. Are your words building people up? Or is it tearing them down? Are we speaking words of hate? Or love? Bitterness? Or blessing? Are we complainers? Or are we releasing compliments? Is our words words of lust? Or is it words of love? Enough time as a man, the words will come out of my mouth and I love. When you see a pretty girl and walk down the street, I lust why we say what we say enough times. This is the reality. And I love. We know me I step on some car, but it's okay. <laughs> it is okay, no problem. In this house, the words that are spoken from this platform will release life. So the words we speak cannot be separated from who we are. <laughs> no matter how hard we try. 
And we want everybody to understand because it's just a blurt out. I was having a bad day. I was having a terrible headache. Why you not understand? Me lose my job last week. And him come take out the furniture out of my house. And you want to come tell me that I must love you? Or you want me to just feel good and be good and the circumstances are the conditions of our flesh if we are not careful it will contaminate our hearts and the more we think about the stuff that are contaminated is the more our hearts become contaminated and we can get to the place in our heart where no longer we look it, it what comes out of us is hatred is is jealousy it's 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 the disappointment it's the unforgiveness and we don't realize that when we look at our children and say go away ugly pitney I use this already. I'm going to use it again. I remember, listen, this thing never has not left me. When I was doing premarital, and you know, I was Pastor Mark was one of the teachers, and he said to me, You know, the scripture says the woman is the glory of the man. Meaning, man, she reflects what you give. So if we have a cantankerous wife, we need to check what going on in a fairy heart. Let me tell you something. It's a serious thing, you know. We're in a church. But it's a serious thing. The man has within him the capacity to control the temperature in his household. And if his temperature is a hearted man, we have a hearted household. <laughs> and here's the truth, here's the thing. It don't stop there. It passes down to our children and to our children's children because what they see, what they hear, forms who they are on the inside I would say our words is not who we are that's a lie from the pit of hell so it's not a jump up word but the word this word should bring leanness to our soul so the words we speak cannot be separated from who we are for the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So how important is our words to God? One, it's very important because we have to give an account for every word, every idle word we speak. Matthew 12, verse 36 to 37 says, But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified. And by the words, not by other people's words, you know. By your words you will be justified or condemned. So the words we speak matters to God. Let me tell you something. I used to talk with me. I used to say some things, you know. And so when I preach this word, I preach to myself too because it's bringing me back to some things when I used to say that. I forgot to say, God help me. And all day yesterday, you know, 
I know I had to, this word was coming, but what was troubling my mind is that God was bringing back to a memory a lot of the foolishness I used to say growing up. And a lot of it was unfiltered. A lot of it was without knowledge. But yet, we, I will still have to give an account for it. Whether I had the knowledge of what I said or I don't have the knowledge of what I said. On the day of judgment, it is not just our actions that matters, but it's the things that we have said. So this scripture indicates that God makes a record of every word we speak. And we have to give an account to him for every unwholesome and every wholesome word we speak. The words we speak are either sets us free or it condemns us. The words that we speak is an outpouring of what has been incubated in our hearts. This scripture debunks the lies of the enemy that, te- that says our word means nothing. That I can say what I want without any consequence. Our hurt and our disappointment does not justify or give room for slander or evil doings. So one, our word, we have to give an account for the word we speak. Number two, life and death is in this little thing called the tongue. As a believer, it is critical that we guard the things we say or align the things we say to the word of God. Because once you say it, you can't take it back. Many times you say it, I'm going to say, boy, Lord, forgive me, take it back. Mm -mm. You know, work so. It come out. I hear someone, here's the real reality a lot of times. This is the real reality. Because the Bible says, as a man think it, In his heart, so is he. So the words is just a representation or an outpouring of what is here. And so when we say it, you can't really take it back. Because it's demonstrating who you are on the inside. And I was, you know, I was talking to Pastor Marcus and he reminded me of a man called Jephthah. And if we turn in the book of Judges chapter 11 verses 31 to 37 it gives an account of Jephthah who made a vow to the Lord. And he, let, me, let, me, let me just I want you to listen to this thing very seriously you know, because it's a serious thing because many of us think when we say things that we can't take it back. And here's a man that said that he made a vow to the Lord and he says he will offer up as burnt offering whatever comes out of his house to meet him. If the Lord will give him victory in battle. So the reason why he said what he said was because he wanted victory. He never wanted dead. And here how important it is that we consider the things that we say. Because he said, and it will be whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's. And And I will offer as a burnt offering. Next verse. So Jephthah advanced towards the people of Ammon and fight against them and the Lord deliver them into his hands. Next verse. And he defeated them from Ero as far as Minith, 20 cities and, and to Abel Keramim with a great slaughter. Thus the people of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Next verse. When Jephthah came to his house at Mitzvah, Mitzvah there was his daughter. <laughs> Come 
coming out to meet him with timbrels and so the man how important it is that we think before we say <laughs> he didn't have thought or think that it would have been his daughter that come out to meet him and the bible says when he was with his child and besides her he had no other son or daughter next verse and it came to pass that when he saw her that him tear up him clothes and him said alas my daughter you have brought me very low because he now understood the power of his words for I've given my word to the Lord and I cannot take it back let me tell you something. Me and my father, and if I me that, me want to take back my words. But it can't take back. Because he said it. It was ratified before the Lord. <laughs> Jephthah was confronted with the reality of his spoken words he didn't think about who would have greeted him the words we speak have the power of life and death so be careful what that what you say make sure that it is aligned to the word of God many of us make vows we don't even thinking about it Many of us go into marriages without even thinking about it. Many of us get in bed with somebody without even thinking about it. But because my flesh was crying out. And we allow our flesh to set us up. Can imagine how Jephthah felt. So our, our words releases life or death. The third thing we have to remember is that a word is a gift from God. In the book of Genesis, we see where God said, let us make man in our own image according to our own likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle and all the earth. And the word image is translated in Hebrew, um, the Hebrew word, and it means shape, resemblance, figure, or shadow. Therefore, man was made to shadow, in, shadow God in our actions, our thoughts, and also in what we say. So when God had formed the earth, he brought forth Adam, and he had formed every living thing in him. He said, Adam, come. Here are all the animals that I've created. Whatever you see, that they are that's what it will be Adam's word gave identity and definition to a lion as opposed to an elephant the words we speak are not given to us just for us it's a gift from God. So when God sat with him, he said, listen, you were made to shadow me. And if, it, if at my word, the earth was formed and all of these things, I'm giving you a shadow of what I'm, I am. So that when you sit with the, these animals, what you say is what they will be, not just for that time, but throughout generations. That's why as a parent, when we name our children, be careful.
careful what you name them because the identity you give to them is not just for a time it is for the rest of their lives So when Adam spoke these words, it gave identity. So the power to use words is a unique and powerful gift from God. And so a lot of times as parents, we have to be careful of the things we confess over our children. Not because he mash up the shoes means that you have to call him worthless, worthless boy. Not because your daughter didn't behave the way you expected means if you tell her, say she was a little. You know what? We don't, we don't, on camera. We don't want to repeat the word. We know what we are talking about. Because what you say affects who they are and who they will become. And, and we see many of our children now struggling in schools and trying to make it through because I would say, why, why is it that them heads so tough? Because you said that they will not amount to anything. That no good will come from them. I would say we don't, I would say we want to be separated from our words. When many of our youth today are where they are because of the confession that was said over them. And they're struggling. And you know what happened? God is on the one hand making intercession. But on the one hand, he has given man dominion in the earth. And that which he has given dominion is misusing that which he has been given. So there's a war, a tug of war trying to take place. Because the spirit of God wants the, our children to survive. But it's fighting the words of those that have been given rulership here on earth. And there's a struggle but I declare this morning that our children shall be taught of the Lord. Father, we reverse this morning every negative word that has been spoken over our children. We declare our children will be successful in everything that they touch. Father, we cut off every one of those words that have been spoken without thought over their lives. And we declare that our children shall live and not die that our children will become mighty men and women of God that will raise up the standard of God in the earth that we are now father this morning we cut off every unwholesome word over our children and our children's children our children will live and not die Father, this morning, our children will live and not die. Listen, I don't know about you, but not on my watch. Not on my watch. And I'm not just warring for my child. I'm warring for every child that they be freed of the words of an unthought mind as believers we have to understand the power of our words when we come to pray when I pray idle words when I pray words of feelings we don't pray words of what we think. We pray words that are aligned with the word of God. For the Bible says at the entrance of the word, 
Let me tell you something. Something is being entered into our children this morning. So this morning, Lord, we release the mind, the heart, and the will of Christ over the lives of our children. Father, we declare that they will not deny Jesus. But Lord, they will confess you as Lord. So Father, we put a blockage against every word. We declare that every negative word will hit a blockage this morning. So words have life. You see the gunman them and the gang them them have an agenda for our children society have an agenda for our children they want to tell you how your children should be in the next couple of years that your children will become like robots because they must take chip to live you know I was researching something for you know to assist Isabel with her homework and the first thing that comes up on the, when you Google and searching, you know what come up? AI generated. So you have a system that's trying to tell you how they must think and respond to an answer. And the reality is it that it look like truth. The words don't matter. They are just putting their words in another form. And it have them attached to an, to an instrument. And you see, when it have them attached, all different kinds of images come up on these other things. There's no filter on these things. So I encourage your parents, listen, don't just leave them on the phones. Don't just give them the devices. Look at what is coming up on the screens. There's a lot of child pornography that has been spoken through the internet. And they think that it's, it's just AI. It's just something that that assist no 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 you begin to speak that which should be in their lives number four our lifestyle must be in alignment with the confession of our mouth so the Bible tells us in Romans 10 verses 9 to 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In verses 10, it speaks about righteousness and salvation. So righteousness speaks to our standing before God. While salvation speaks to the sanctification of the inner man. So in other words, Paul is saying, our confession of Jesus must be reflected not just in what we say, but also in what we do. You know, sometimes as Christians, we say some things. And we do some things. And we try to justify it and say, God understands. No. Mm -mm. The only thing God understands, I'm word. As believers, you can't just get up and tell our people. Who we are 
have to line up with what we confess. And this is why that the sometimes when you go and you try pray, the prayer only go, I don't even think you lick the roof. Because there's a disjointedness. We are praying words, but the word's not in us. The word has not tra- transacted on the inside where life begins to come out of our mouth. And we think that we can come up and preach. And Let me tell you something the Bible says. You will do miracles in thy name. Run out demon in thy name. But on the day of judgment, he says, I know you not. Because who we are is not a confession of the things we say. When God tells you, say, listen. Don't slander your brother because they owe you money. Let me deal with some real things. The natural thing is that, you know the Bible say, don't lend if you can lose it. In, in my terms. So when you slander them, you slander yourself. Because you never follow the word. I want a serious thing, you know. I know say that. But let's shame the devil, man. Come on, agree with the word this morning. When you shame the devil, you're saying, God, I recognize that there's a place in me that needs to be fixed. Because really and truly, only God can fix those areas on the inside. But we have to be willing to admit it, to confess it ourselves. I say, we are waiting upon God. God, are we upon we? I know it's a tough word, you know, but listen. The Bible says that the entrance of the word comes light. So don't shut down to the word. Agree with the word. And let the enemy know that no longer will you have control of my words. Because I understand that my words have a power to bring life or death. So our society, in our society today, whether it be government, police force, church, school, business area, if they talk a good talk, but if you should check them behind the scenes, you find a disconnect. Their words are not aligned to their lifestyles or how they conduct their affairs. So as believers, we cannot operate like the world does. The inner man must be aligned to our confession of Jesus. It is not an option, but a requirement as a believer. It's not a choice to live right when you get saved. It's not a choice to speak words of affirmation even when you don't feel it. I have to deal with these things, you know, because this is a part of us getting oil. Getting oil in our lamps ready. Becoming that five wise virgins. This is a part of the oil that needs to get ready, that help us to get ready. Our words, if we check our words to the word of God. It's bringing alignment to our souls. This is one of the ways how we get extra oil in our lamp. It's not an option. So the slander must stop the jealousy spirit must stop the bitterness must go I'm licking at this spirit because 
I'm not licking at any individual, but we're fighting the spirit of the age. Because he wants us to live in bitterness. Anger must go. Double-mindedness must go. The entitlement spirit must go. The only entitlement we have as a believer is to live right before Jesus. I want to see your spirit in There's a lot of entitlement in operation. I'm entitled to be this. You know who I am? This spirit has got to die. This spirit does not provide any oil. It has to die. You know this thing come up a lot of times? It come up a lot of times when we start hanging a little money. We. When one month come and you look at your account and you see a 500,000, you say, cha cha. <laughs> and we go buy a big suit and we say, boy, we must come sit down on the front seat. <laughs> and we feel entitled. Listen, give me way, let me come through the door. You know, see me suit. And we feel a little privilege because we have a little extra money if we spend. <laughs> if I'm money are your God, I ask the question if I'm money going to speak for you on judgment day. <laughs> Listen, come on, let's have a little fun. Real thing, you know. Yes. You want other one? When you get married to one pretty wife with everybody they want. <laughs> Not no wrong. If you honor your wife, but when she become a god. Yes. And it controls how you speak. And if a man look by your wife to her, you want to thump him in a mouth. Don't look at my wife. And we esteem her higher than we esteem God. These are the realities that we see. Let me tell you, we see it on TV every day. The media has infiltrated the kingdom of God in a significant way. We don't even realize it. You know what happens a lot of times? They change things in the Bible. And because we don't know the word, we don't know. <laughs> this is what the word says. In Philippians 1 verse 27. It says, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ then whether I come and see you again or only hear about you Paul says I will know that you are standing together in one spirit and in one purpose fighting together for the faith which is the good news believers people of God the enemy is not against each other. The war is not against each other. The war is against the enemy that's after your soul. 
So when you see a brother or a fellow sister struggling with some things, pray for them. Don't talk about them behind them back and slander them and throw them under the bus. Pray for them. Go to them and say, listen, I'm fighting in prayer with you. I'm standing with you. This thing won't overcome you. Release words of affirmation. Release words of strength. Release words of life, not death. Change the atmosphere that is happening around them with your words. The very fact that I'm here is because of someone praying. The very fact that you are here is because someone prayed a word that was aligned to the word of God and it released life over you instead of death. The enemy wanted you to die but it had to come but the word of God came against the word of the enemy. Many of us are here because someone was willing to get on their knees and not be a spectator, not be a slanderer, but they got on their knees and they said, God, let them live. We're called to stand together in one spirit. So how do we change the way we speak? First, we have to repent. Repent of the negative words that you have spoken. That means stop making excuses for yourself. See your word, negative words as God sees them. That they bring death upon yourself and upon those the negative word was released over. Ask God's forgiveness for bringing negative words on yourself and others. And choose to forgive. So one, we must repent. Two, we must renounce the consequences in our life of the negative words we have to say it loud we can't mumble it we have to renounce it with our mouth say God I am no longer that person when the woman was before the well everybody was slandering her speaking negative words saying what she's a harlot saying these things but you know what Jesus said he put it back on them and says, if any one of you is without sin, cast the first stone. You know what hit them? The condition of who they were. We have to renounce it. We have to give no legal room to the enemy. The third one, we have to break the effects of the negative word of our life. And finally, we have to speak blessing. So we repent. We renounce. We break it. But now we have to change the language. Many times, we break it. But we don't replace it with words. This is what Apostle said, I mean, um, Bishop said last week. When he was saying that there's, don't, give it, don't leave any empty room. Don't leave any void. Fill it with words of affirmation. Fill it with words of love. Fill it with words that will bring life into, their, into, your, into your situation. We can't leave it empty. If we leave it empty, we leave space for a negative word to come back. You know, we're sitting as I close and Apostle shared, we were sitting there on Friday, Friday, Friday we met for ELT. And Apostle shared something very, she shared a blog this week about intercession. And Apostle wrote that when we pray for each other, we are investing in something eternal in that person's life. Every relationship in the kingdom of God is a covenant relationship. 
Jesus is in covenant with us and we are in covenant with each other as believers. So the Bible tells that he's forever making intercession for us. Jesus is intercessing that, interceding that we make it to the end. We, you and I, are also in a covenant relationship. And we should pray that every one of us make it to the end. Pray that each of you, that person sitting beside you right now, that they make it to the end. We were saved not to go occupy heaven alone. We were saved so that we can live with each other. Pray for one another. Bless one another. Become our brother's keeper. Watch out for their souls. Make sure that the enemy don't come in. So many times we see the signs. Sometimes we're in relationship and we have conversations. We see the places where the enemy comes in. Let's change how we see it and how we deal with it. Instead of going up on the phone and going to say, you know, say, me to have one conversation and this come out. Why that really in the person? Instead of grabbing the person and say, listen, man, that's not how we live. 